द बजाज पल्सर वर्ल्ड फेवरेट इंडियन लिटल आइरोनिक सेंटेंस नाउ दैट इन द रिसेंट टाइम्स द बजाज पल्सर हैज इन बीन डूइंग एज वेल एज बजाज वुड हैव एक्सपेक्टेड इन टर्म्स ऑफ सेल्स बट देर इज अ रीजन फॉर इट इन अ वर्ल्ड वेयर फैड्स टर्न टू ट्रेंड्स ट्रेंड्स टर्न टू नॉर्म्स वेरी क्विकली द बजाज पल्सर लाइनअप वॉज स्टार्टिंग टू बिकम अ लिटल ओल्ड बट बजाज टुक दैट पर्सनली एंड दे केम आउट विद दिस आर्ग्यूबली बजाज इज मोस्ट टेक सैवी मोटरसाइकिल एवर लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन वेलकम टू द ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर बजाज पल्सर एन टू फिफ्टी हाउ इज इट वॉट ऑल इज न्यू लेट्स फाइंड आउट Way the N250 looks is a huge talking point because Bajaj in our briefing said that a reason for the sales to go a little bit down in the Pulsar lineup was because they seemed to look small and they weren't as striking to look at as its competition. But this motorcycle, my oh my, it is pretty striking to look at. The sticker job is fantastic. The champagne coloured upside down forks also. add a lot of premiumness to the look and even this upswept subframe looks very sporty the rear 140 section tire also adds quite a lot of muscle to the motorcycle and all in all it is a very nice motorcycle to look at making this a much more appealing bike for someone who's looking for a sporty looking bike the pulsar n250 comes pretty back to tech wizardry especially for its segment it comes with three uh abs rider modes which is rain road and off road and it also comes with traction control which in off road mode you can switch the traction control completely off for you to be able to slide the motorcycle with the throttle you might be wondering why is there no ride by wire cable and there is traction control well the throttle cable is still there because the traction control actually works on the wheel speed sensor of the abs itself so it is technology that you might have never seen in this segment and uh, yeah some other larger motorcycles do have it but they have a sort of similar system to it this is very well thought of very well calibrated and it is much more simpler as a system uh compared to the more premium large displacement motorcycles that have this kind of uh traction control system all in all it is a very nice motorcycle with lots of toys too because you have a digital display now which i had a small problem with i would have preferred it to turn uh white and black instead of black and white the whole time so that you could have a day mode and night mode The digital speedo on the N250 also comes with Bluetooth connectivity, which gives you uh, text alerts. It also gives you caller alerts and turn-by-turn -turn navigation. But features aside, let's talk about how the motorcycle rides. The new Pulsar N250 is designed to be a beginner motorcycle. During my time with the bike, I really enjoyed the new 37 mm USB front forks. They've brought in quite a bit of stability to the front, which makes it much more confidence-inspiring under hard braking. I did find the suspension to be slightly on the stiffer side, which is what I usually prefer personally. But it is going to tire you out sooner in the city. It is not jarring by any means. It still irons, bumps out in a decent manner, and it is nice to have a sure-footed bike on a spirited ride. But I wouldn't call it supple in city conditions. In short, a novice would really enjoy how the N250 is so forgiving as a motorcycle on a spirited ride. The ABS modes are a first in the Bajaj lineup and they've done a great job in calibrating the road and rain mode. It is a little confusing to put an off-road mode on a street bike, but Bajaj say that it is there to increase the confidence of a novice rider in bad conditions. The difference between the three modes is just the amount of wheel slip that the ABS allows. In rain mode, the ABS is quick to intervene and will allow the least amount of lock possible. In road mode, the ABS is less intrusive and will also take a little longer to release a locked wheel. Off-road mode takes that tolerance a little higher, letting you lock up the rear for a while longer before the ABS kicks in. 
but switching off ABS isn't an option. That being said, you can turn off traction control in off-road mode in order to have a little bit more fun and control over the bike in loose conditions. The one place the N250 has remained the same is the engine department. It still has the oil-cooled 250cc block uh, that pushes out 24.5 PS and 21.5 Newton meters of torque in a very mid-rangey manner. The torque curve uh, tapers towards the mid-range and then it slightly uh, tapers down towards the top end, making this motorcycle very good in the city because the engine is very tractable. It has a five-speed gearbox, but the gears are nice and long. So they are very, it's very usable in the city, making this very easy to ponder around in a singular gear or maybe max one gear up, one gear down, making this a very easy motorcycle to ride along through its own city pace. One thing I loved about riding the motorcycle was how light the clutch is, how slippery the box was. It was very slick, really nice, and it always was slotting into the gear perfectly, and how nice the bassy noise from the motorcycle is. In fact, if you can overlook the raw thumpness that you get from single cylinders, this is actually a very nice sounding single cylinder engine. While the N250 does seem to look bigger, it doesn't feel like it, at least to me. I'm 5'11", and when I am sat on the N250, I don't have much room to play with in terms of seat space. I am quite confined to one place. Yes, if you are a taller human, there will be much more knee room if you are taller than 5'11", but you are still going to be in quite a committed spot and a very constrained spot in terms of the bottom. But upstairs you are quite free to move, you are in an upright position and the handlebars are also nice and short and close to you. So it requires very little movement to make the bike move quite a bit. So it will be very easy to maneuver around in uh, smaller tight traffic situations. But when you need to leverage around it and maybe hug the tank, that's not gonna happen bro. It is a street fighter but it is a city motorcycle and it is meant for young people that are beginners. So this is perfect for that because it's so easy to ride. But yeah, if you are a little taller, you will feel a little cramped. At 1.51 lakhs X showroom, the N250 is a really nice proposition for a beginner as the best deal in the segment if you're looking for a bike that is connected, has lots of features and rides well. This is some great bang for your buck in the 250cc segment and I can't wait to see the response for this bike. Smooth, easy going and striking, that's the Pulsar N250. Is it for you? I would say go to your local Bajaj dealership, take a test ride and see how you feel about it but I can tell you right now you are going to be slightly impressed. Do you like the new avatar of the N250? Do let us know your thoughts in the comments below. This is your boy Bhavneet signing out. Peace.